What's up, y'all? I got a banger from Alpha Central. Let's get straight into it. I'm a feminist. I can actually cook. I'm a feminist. Watch me cook. Come over and uh, join their team in the ST racing. <laughs> to be fair, she did cook her own career. <laughs> I was not Power move that. on the first day, and I offer to pay and see what they do. Yeah, and go. if he takes her up on it, he's done. He's not getting a second date. Facts. The problem with this is that she's not being genuine when she offers to pay. True. Instead, she's using it as a test. And while 99% of men will not take her up on this, and they'll say, no, I'm paying... All men would not like knowing that this is a test and not genuine. Women clear. Facts, it's, it's a piss test. This is what they do. Measuring pens. Excuse me, do you want some free bread? Uh, okay, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, you see, if you were to take my number, yeah, you wouldn't have to buy bread anymore because you'd have your own personal little yeast factory on speed dial. Yeast factory? Ugh. Oh my God. That's, oh my God, that's disgusting. Okay, it looks like I've come in on gay day. Wow, women. Bro, she looked like a catfish. Shots Keep it a buck a -rones. Keep it a buck a -roni. Okay, so this is how much my girlfriend hates money. She bought a book called Meow, right? You would think like, oh, maybe it's a story about a cat or something, right? So she wants to read a story about a cat. You know what? No, that's not what this book is. This book, every... Single word in this book says meow. Stupid. Every single oh page, my God. the introduction, the, 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 everything is meow. Stupid. What are you reading? Like, how much money was this book? And she'll be asking for a 20. Bro, that's, that's wild, bro. A whole cat or a whole cat just meow book. That is so dumb. This is how to talk to your friend's girlfriend when he's not around. Let's begin. Hi. How are you today? Shut up. At the end of the day, it's- Bro, I hate that hyper- Hi, how are you doing? It's just so disingenuous. Women can't find men anymore, because men don't want to deal with women like this anymore, and they're being shamed on social media. Just today, fans model attempts to film herself being looked at while in line, but the stunt backfires spectacularly. She makes her career on- fans by yeah. people looking at her but then she goes out and tries to entrap people looking at her well probably that's not a bad I mean, marketing it's so true it's what a lot of these women do they go to the gym he's looking at me but you're on only fans dummy <laughs> what are you talking about you you're letting men look at you online all the time but then somebody looks at you in public and it's a travesty like what are you talking it's so dumb dude tactic is like these people want to look at me so you can get a more inside look imagine being so starved for attention that but it's just the entitlement and just the disconnection from actual reality. Like, that's what's so crazy to me is like, these women are so unattached from what's, what is, wait, what is going on here? Why did your last relationship end? My last relationship ended because she he, built like a tank. Got fired! He was a musician and he asked me to be his manager, but told me he wasn't going to pay me. Wait. Well, he's a musician, so he's a dirtbag off bat. He wanted me to have his baby too. So you don't want kids? Well, I, I have two kids. Bro, you can't make this stuff up, man. A lot of baggage. <laughs> nah, because to me it sounds like Bro <laughs> You dated a broke musician and then were mad and then was mad he was a broke musician. The thing is, bro, when me and Cass first got together, I was a broke musician. I made no money. You know how much I was making chat? Let me know in the comments how much you think I was making. I'll give Loki a carrot in the meantime. Somebody want a carrot? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Guess how much I was making a month when I was a musician? I was making like $500 a month. 500 a month, living in Austin, Texas, bro. I was a bum. But Cass got, me, got with me when I was a bum because she fell in love with who I was, personality. And when a girl falls in love with your personality, it's easier to get her on the hook. There's three things that most men want out of a woman. It's gonna be your looks, your appearance, your personality and your character. Your appearance is what gets my attention. Your personality is what keeps my attention. And your character is what makes me fall in love with you. Do you guys agree or disagree with that? Let me know. Goat, uh... Go for her own kids instead of starting a family with him. Your ex-husband took half your stuff? Goat. Goat, yeah. uh... Legend, uh... I want to shake his hand! Where is this man? 
man, I want to shake his hand. Why'd you get divorced? You wouldn't get a job. Oh, this guy kicked dude. He's just sitting at home with the kid playing video games. What if I could, babe? <laughs> how much you make a year? <laughs> or how much did you make a year? Quality rules. Women act like stay-at-home wives are fucked. For real, dude. Quality does rule. Good on him. I mean, I'm, I'm not a big proponent of being a bum, though. I, don't, I, I like to work. I like to do things. I like to stay busy. All saying, I want a strong man who's going to lead, who's got it together, who isn't in his feelings. But then on the other hand, you're like, but I also want him to let me hang out with my guy friends. Well, but let me ask you this. Why does together? a man, you know, not wanting you to hang out with a guy friend equate to a strong man? Why right. does that make them a strong man? Why do I need because to lead? strong leaders that are men know how to set boundaries and understand how other men are. And the thing is, is if we were an insecure man, we would let you do whatever, but a secure man sets a boundary and stands his ground. That's the thing. Well, it depends. Do you want him hanging out with women when you're not there? I didn't care if, I respect, if he I, communicated. Yeah. Okay, I hear what you're saying, but I pay attention to what women do, not what they say. So, if you say, I'm fine with my boyfriend going off and hanging out with his girl who's a friend, it doesn't bother me. What I'm hearing is, that's not a guy you really want. That's nice. not a guy that you're actually into who really like... Maybe you're speaking for yourself, but for me, that's not what happened. You know, I loved him. I wanted a whole future with him. But and not enough to not hang out with the guy friends. Right. It was pretty obvious the conversation was headed... I had a girl in college try to pull this switcheroo on me. It was actually beautiful. She was like, I want you to hang out with other girls to make sure that I'm the one. I want you to go out there and kick it with other girls. And I was like, uh, biggity bet. I'm going to be blowing backs out. I'm cool with that. <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm the one. You're not. <laughs> hey, everyone. About to hard post uh, my favorite girl. So, Morgan, get the out of the way. I'm trying to get my truck. <laughs> the look on her what face tells me that she knew she was a king. There's his girl right there. I matter in a guy. Yes. Like, yeah. I'm going to judge based on something you guys can't change. So we're going to measure your waist. What? 35 <laughs> inches. We're going to let the comments decide, actually. You better be very careful. Oh, no. Say. Too big to say size matters. He should have also asked you too women. Big. You too big. 35 inch waist? Dad, gum. Y'all know we, we got to hit it now. Big back, big back. To say this but i think that women have to lower their standards before you go crazy on me just hear me out i agree with her the amount of chronically single girlfriends that i know they're realizing it. either approaching their 30s or already in their 30s that are like wanting to settle down and have a family but can't is an epidemic at this point a lot of them and we're talking about women that are financially stable have educations are beautiful have their fathers in their lives like come from nice families like, we're not talking about, like, a bum. We're talking about, like, a very decent young lady. Well, the so thing is, is <laughs> what we deem as valuable, ladies, you don't really understand. This is why I say modern women are turning into the men that they've always wanted. Because we don't care about your career. We don't care about your job. We don't care about you being financially stable. Those are things a regular adult should have. Those are prerequisites to get into a relationship. We really don't care about all that stuff. Chat, let me know. Guys, do you care about if a girl has a good job, a career, or is financially stable? We don't care. We care about you being fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive, no kids, quaint, uplifting, elegant, empathetic, natural, and nurturing. That's what we care about. And a lot of you ladies miss the mark. You think that the things we care about are the things you care about. We don't. I don't care if a girl has a job. She could be flipping burgers at freaking Burger King. I don't care. Are you feminine? Are you inspirational? Do I feel like you could raise my children? You know what I mean? Are you a good helpmate to me? Do you know how to cook and clean and be um, like, do you know how, Do you know your way around the house? Do you know how to organize a home? Things like that. That's the stuff we care about. Chat, let me know if I'm right or if I'm wrong. So I'll have conversations with my friends and they'll say things like, oh, like, you know, I wanted to make like at least $200,000 a year. Like, at Jesus, 200 grand. So much money. He has to be in shape. Okay. Like, I really like a guy with a six pack. I love a guy who's like- You know like, how hard it is to have a six pack? Six two. Okay. I need to go with like a full head of hair. Like I can't okay. do bald guys. Every single time you throw a new specification into what you desire, the only person that fits within the parameters of what you are looking for exists in your dreams. Yeah. No, I've had girlfriends tell me like, oh my God, no, he's great. This and that, like, but I can't do a short king. So you're telling me you found a guy that's like not bad looking, has a great job with benefits, like financially stable. 
comes from a great family. And you can't do it because his legs aren't long enough. Like, you are it is out so of stupid. your mind. Stupid. I agree. And that's, that's called women, the side though, effect. Dude. And the thing is, the more specifications you put on a man, the the, the fewer men. Is that a baby seat I'll be back there? Single mom. Is, that, is that a little baby, baby car seat? The more specifications you have, the smaller a pool of men. This is why I say, dude, like... Ladies, as you get older, you it, like when you're young, you have an ocean of men to pick from, and then it's a lake, and then it's a pool, and then it's a puddle, and then now once you're in your 30s and like mid 30s, it's a freaking bottle cap just full of liquid. That's it. That's that's the that's the pool of men that you have, and then you still have the audacity to be picky. It's crazy to me, bruv. Oh, you're his dad. Um, I just need your son's number. Oh, I just need your number. Oh. Don't assume things like oh, okay. That's a woman who thinks. <laughs> Don't assume things like that. <laughs> He's like, that older man is actually blowing my back out. Typically, the first thing that's withheld when women don't get what they want. I don't it's always care. the umbrellas, bro. If this offends you or gets you upset, but women are vindictive, evil, and manipulative. Like what her. psychopath deprives their man from love, affection, and there's ways to go about things the more you scold your man belittle him and get mad because you don't get your way he's going to be pushed in the direction of somebody else Thanks. this is why men always talk about peace so damn much because who wants to be with somebody who creates chaos or be with somebody who takes the immature route hypothetical say you and your man don't see eye to eye he didn't buy you the necklace you wanted now you're gonna go oh i'm not gonna do stuff with you oh i'm not gonna hug you i'm not gonna this i'm not gonna that that says a lot about your character, that if I don't do something for you, you're going to take things away from me on purpose. Mm -hmm. Not because it's I did something. It's vindictive, malicious. Yeah, dude. On purpose, because you're vindictive, you're evil. Now, if this is hitting a nerve, you're probably that type of girl. You're probably the type of girl who never sleeps with your man, but gets mad that he likes pictures. You want a monogamy, right? Man, that's man, called. Man, she is preaching. I like this girl. I like her. Fighting the good fight. Preaching the gospel. We appreciate you, honey. She's on the right team. She is. Oh my! Big back, big back. God. Don't know what's gotten into me recently. Calories, food, <laughs> and before y'all come for me, I know I'm big too, but I don't go around <laughs> asking questions I don't need answers to. Right on, my guy. Men know it's time. I don't know what's gotten into me. Like the Kaisenot meal, a Big Mac, a number four with extra fries, two medium pizzas, <laughs> a whole Chinese buffet. Next time they try treating you like an option, respond by saying, look, I'm not interested in being disrespected by somebody that I lowered my standards Ooh, for. That's good. <laughs> I wouldn't even that's call that good. toxic. That's good. That's good. I always play the trump card. I always be two steps ahead. Hi, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, good choice to record. Why? Oh, because I was going to... Because <laughs> oh, I can leave later. I can leave later. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I can't leave earlier. So if you tell me 5.30, you're done at 5. I can't do nothing about that. You tell me 5.30 and it's 6.24. You <laughs> I got a problem with that. <laughs> and then you're going to tell me coming down at 6.10. 6.24. 6.24. 14 minutes. That's a minute of floor. Basically, if you walked it, you slow. I'm sorry. I thought about all this because I had 54 minutes to think about it, right? <laughs> right? Or, or, or yes or yes? Yeah, uh, yes or yes. That's what, okay, yeah. No, yeah, 54 minutes. It's funny. I mean, I can't stand that either. And I've told Cass, uh, yeah, just tell me what time you're going to be ready. Pepperoni. I'm not really a pepperoni girl, but. Stop lying. You're not really a pepperoni girl. Stop. <laughs> Stop! I feel bad. Oh well. Um. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you can't be fat and be a picky eater, bro. <laughs> if I've told you guys yet or not, but I'm on a pill to help me like curb my appetite or whatever. Um, the lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh! <laughs> it's kind of helping. <laughs> it's to the point where I kind of have to like force myself to eat right now. <laughs> <Make>. <laughs> Forcing <laughs> yourself! 
<laughs> Odds are that pill she's talking about is a gummy I'm bear. I'm forcing myself to eat right now. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> big back, big back. Oh, I'm sorry, chat. Women who wear makeup. Yes, that's true. Most men actually prefer a woman that doesn't wear a whole lot of makeup. Thanks. They would rather see the natural beauty rather than the one that the makeup created. Oh yeah. So why is the makeup industry still a thing? I would have thought that because the answer- preying on women's insecurities! Shots fired! It's a billion dollar industry. That would have been completely obvious, but I guess not. Why is it recession proof, pandemic proof, literally thriving and growing every year? Because women's insecurities are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's be very honest here. It's because women, who are the primary users and purchasers of makeup, continue to buy it. No matter what their personal financial situation happens to be, there's almost always room somewhere in the budget for makeup. Well, you gotta think, what does the term makeup even mean? It's making up for a lack of aesthetic, which means you're lacking in something, so you have to make up for it. That's exactly what makeup is. Look at the name. And that's because society, and by society, I mean other women, have convinced women that they only can look their best if they have makeup on. That they're somehow not complete if they're not wearing it. In fact, there are many women that will not even consider leaving the house unless they're wearing some sort of makeup. But let's not get it twisted. It's not men that are convincing women to wear makeup. It's other women. So that's why makeup industry continues to grow. It must be facts. Well, the thing is, is like these marketing teams are probably all women. It's like, how do we prey on the insecurities of women? It's so devious, but you ladies are going to do it and nothing's going to happen to it. It's going to be around forever and ever because you ladies are so insecure. Stay, which is a good thing. They rocking with you. So what I'm going to have you do, can I hold your thumbs up? I'm going to need you to eliminate half of the line. Oh, so man. we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're old shit. God, that's like 15 so girls. we got to drop it down to six ladies. Floor is yours. Mm. Mm. Chill on. This is very difficult. It's very hard, right? Yeah. There's a lot of beautiful ladies here today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's one. Five more. Three. Four. <laughs> Women acting like they're the only ones who get to tell guys they're not- She was built bad. Y'all see that one with the knees? Ooh, Lord have mercy on my cereal. Makes a guy easily unattractive. Oh, many. When he doesn't have a fresh haircut, when he doesn't have style, um, when he- Baby girl, your belly is almost touching your knees. You were the last one to talk. Looks like a frog. Like, just come on. <laughs> what makes a guy easily un I'm driven. Not driven. Uh, just like when he talks about other chicks. Toxic. What's your other advice to all the men? Okay, you listening? All right. The way to the men is to treat your girlfriend with respect. If you want her to be your girlfriend, you treat her with respect. You treat her like you treat your mom. Notice how it's always the one who gets the least attention. It's always the big backs telling you what to do. These women are the ones setting the standards. Self on a scale of one to ten. Nine. What would you rate this girl? Ah, bro, nine? I want to ten. I don't know what that is. That's not a female. What did he say? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> She's shaped like a zero. She looks like a zero. Faye, you get that one, Faye. Uh, no. Butters. Get that one, Faye. Oh Butters. my gosh. What, what do they call it? What do they call it? What do, in the UK, I know we got some UK viewers. What do y'all call it in the UK? Clapped. And they hurt. I don't think she'd want to date me. Why not? She'd probably eat me. So, what would you rate yourself on 1 to 10? I'm a 10 out of 10. Come on. Hi, excuse me. What would you rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? 9. And what Nine? would you rate this person on a scale of 1 to 10? 7. What would you rate this girl on like 1 to 10? Excuse Two. me? <laughs> 1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's what happens when women tell each other <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't even that girl We can witch of the West Just because you haven't found your nine on ten or ten on ten guy yet does not mean you settle for a five on ten or a six on ten guy because you're too scared to be alone or never being able to find someone better. I think maybe the people who are in a league 
should preach about that particularly Ooh. for example if a person who has become a policeman should preach us on how to become a policeman a person who is a gold medalist runner should teach us on how to become a runner uh, I, I similarly agree. if a person is 9 or 10 himself or herself should lecture us on how to date a person who is a 9 or 10 i second this guy I mean, maybe dude, she's like a 3 all day if she followed her own tips she would have actually had a man herself Would you rather go on a date with a satanist or a christian um a satanist why is that i just would i would not want to go on well, like what kind of christian like are we talking like a roman catholic A Methodist. These things matter. How do you think that day would go? I'm Jewish. I don't know how they would feel about that. It would have been better to ask any other You're guy. You're Jewish and you'd rather go on a date with a Satanist? Stupid. Never wrong, bro. Talking to you. <laughs> One, two, and so Gianna, Grace, and then who else? I, I choose Denise because I think Denise is pretty too. You don't clearly don't like darker skinned girls. <laughs> <laughs> You're shorter than me, big so we back, probably. Big back. would be friends. Uh, <laughs> the pale one over there. Ladies, this is his preference. Oh, I don't care about his preference. I just She literally just hides him like, oh, "I'm sorry, you're 5'8", so he's friends not, only." Are you upset about it? No, I'm not no, upset about but, it. But no, he's not upset about it, but it seems like you're upset about him choosing white girls. Yeah, but I don't understand it. I don't even see why there is a comparison. Well, it is a comparison because they're both preferences. Uh, so it seems stupid. like he's shamed stupid. for having his preferences. Okay. He like white chicks. Okay. Right? Yeah. Your that's, preferences, that's you don't want short guys, right? Uh-huh. And he didn't shame you for your preferences. I But don't. you shamed him for his preferences. That my friends is a classic case. I love it. I love it. Equality. They can't stand it. They want it, but they cannot stand it, gentlemen. Goodness gracious alive. <laughs> No man wants to come home after working 40 to 50 hours a week to negativity and them. Thank you. Preach it, honey. Have some dinner ready. Yes. Get him some fresh underwear and run a shower. Then get down on your knees. It's not that hard. We need more women like this. Yes, ladies. Women were the ones who wanted 50-50. And I love the country accent. Cass has an accent, like a Texas accent. She don't even know it sometimes. She'd be, she be sounding country. That's why a lot of y'all like... Levi, I like your country accent, man. It's boy's cousin from Texas. If I go hang out with my family, this is what we all sound like, boy. And sometimes I got to sit there and curb it. When I'm out there mowing the yard, son, boy, this is that's the only way I sound, sonny boy. But I just can't help it sometimes. Like, sometimes I got to curb it. My God. It. <coughs> my God. Someone tell the woman. I think she's close. I don't know why she's oh, close to doing, but that woman is not close to planting a bomb. <laughs> 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 Maximum control your girl, please. Nah, she's not my girl. She's for the street. She went out of her way. She's not my girl. She's for the street. She's a runner. She's a track star. <laughs> I love it. Like, can you like watch out? Stop like pulling up your leggings right by me. Thanks. These models What out. What is this? These OF girls, there's no shame. Got to bring back the shame in this world. Women just running around, running amok, pulling up their pants, shaking their tails, letting their butts bounce. Okay, let's, let's hop into the Reddit. This is from a little out of date, but something Levi talks about quite a lot. What representing men in divorce taught me about... Okay, we'll just jump into it. Better the payoff. So... Honey, it was clear that you already learned the important life lesson. The harder you work, the better the payoff. So, it was time that you learn another valuable lesson. Sometimes, no matter how hard you work, you just end up with shit. <laughs> and who better to teach just this sort of hard-hitting, direct, and painful life lesson to six-year-old than a single mom? Single mom. told me than my father. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm a divorce attorney. I've been practicing for over 20 years. Oof. I began in Los Angeles, but I've owned my firm in Nevada since 2001. My firm has a particular subspecialty, men's rights. My nine female employees and I specifically represent men in divorce and custody battles. And guess who runs the business end of my law firm? My father. Wow. In my practice, we've represented over 2,000 men, 650 of whom are fathers. Dang. My expertise not only comes from my career, but just as much from my personal life. I'm a mother. 
My children are 23, 15, 12, and barely three. Dang, they come she's been having kids for about 30 years. I'm from two different mothers and three different fathers. Hooker. Let me explain. She's a runner, she's a track star. Two different mothers, huh? <laughs> Let me explain. I helped my ex-husband raise our 23-year-old son, whom I didn't birth from age five. I share custody of my 15-year-old daughter with the same father. My 12-year-old son sadly lost his father to suicide when he was just seven, and my three-year-old is being raised at home with his father and me. I literally live my work every day. <laughs> so what has 20 years of representing men in family law while living my own reality show as a wife, mother, and daughter taught me about fatherhood. Allow me, if you will, to start with the second thing I learned about fatherhood. Men parent differently than women, big surprise. Yeah. But their influence is crucial in the development of their children. Yes. Do you know any mom in the world who would put dog shit in an Easter egg? <laughs> okay, maybe hey, that's a good, to lose young, boy. good thing. Let me better demonstrate this point from my legal experience. When getting my father clients ready for court, I prepare them for this kind of interrogation. Who's your children's doctor or dentist? What's the name of your school principal or even their teacher? What grades did they get on their last report card? Nine times out of 10, they miss the majority of these questions. Yeah. Seriously, does this mean they don't care or love their children as much? I bet it makes you wonder, but please hold your judgment. Here are the questions that my father clients can easily answer. If your son could be a superhero, what would his power be? Mm. What kind of monsters do your kids fear? How high does your daughter feel comfortable flying in a swing? What makes your son feel defeated? Yet, in my experience cross-examining hundreds of mothers in family court, these are the harder questions for them. Most of us know motherhood brings with it a sixth sense and an unspoken bond to our children. But what about fathers? Even fathers feel insecure about this reality. After representing 650 fathers, I can count on one hand those that felt secure in their instinctive role and significance to their children. What's interesting is my anecdotal legal experience suggests otherwise. In 20 years of practice, I've had over 100 men take a paternity test, like Jerry Springer. Seriously, do you know how many were wrong in predicting their biological relation to the child? Oh, no, don't say the number. I'm going to say 30%. Two. Oh. This shocked me and taught me my third lesson. Fathers, too, have a genetic bond and instinct about their children from infancy. Forget where you are for a moment, seriously, and close your eyes. I'd like to ask you to feel. Think about your childhood. Picture your father. His smiling eyes, Absent. strong hands. Beat my mom. Hear his deep voice. What did mm. you love about your dad? Uh, he was a did drug he throw addict. you high into the air? No. Teach you to ride a bike? No. Carry you home when you got hurt? Nope. Push you when you tried to give up? Push my mom. What did it feel like to have a daddy? I didn't have one really. Secure, fun, mm -mm. challenging? No. Now, I go. Guess that's the thing. I was raised by a single mom. Single mom. <laughs> Great video. I'm going to go watch this on my own time. Who, who posted this? Um, Pantheris, Panthera, whoo, Pantherophis. Good Lord. No, good video, though. Good video. Have, but see, I was raised I by a single mom, so anymore. my experience was just a whole lot different. I didn't really have a father figure. My grandfather was more of a father figure than me. Let me know, chat. Who was your father figure in, in your life? Did you have a dad? Were you raised in a, like a nuclear family where you had, you know, your dad, your mom, your grandparents around? Personally, I didn't have the dad piece, but I had my grandparents, which is awesome. Um, but then what I did as a kid, I was pretty intuitive. I learned that I needed to learn how to be a man, but I knew my dad wouldn't be there to teach me. So I learned from other men. I learned from my grandfather. I learned from other dads, like my, my friends. I learned from their dads and their parents that were together. So I learned from that. I took like bits of knowledge from each, each one and was like, okay, this is what I should do. But I think every kid, a boy or a girl, they need to have a good example of what a loving, positive, constructive relationship is. 
And if they don't have that, it's really hard for them to build those bonds. And I was raised by a single mom, so I grew up being a womanizer. I grew up, you know, running amok, doing my thing. Like I said, love bombing girls. That was kind of like what I grew up doing. But then as I got a little bit older, I was like, wait, this is not what I really want. I'm not getting the true results of what I want. I was getting women's, women were sharing their bodies with me, but I wasn't really building like an emotional bond with them. I was just using them. So as I got older, I started to change that around. And then when I started, and then when I found Cass, like we started building a good emotional bond and then we've been together for seven, almost eight years. Love her. Great woman. Um, keeps me in line um, and allows me to be successful and gives me the space I need sometimes to do the things I really want and that help our family. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Loki, did you have a good time today? Dude, he's knocked out. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.